Hello and welcome to the Bot Nirvana podcast where we dive into all things software automation. I am your host Nandan Mullakra. While I'm not podcasting, I write articles on nandan.info. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get right into it. Our guest today is Matthias Fransen. Matthias is the managing partner at Roborana. Roborana provides intelligent automation services in Europe and is based out of Belgium. In this episode, we talk about the practical aspects of implementing intelligent automation and how organizations can evolve digitally using end-to-end automation. Let's listen in. Hi, Matthias. Welcome to the Bot Nirvana podcast. Can we start with a quick personal intro and a background about yourself? Hi there. Uh, I'm Matthias and I'm a managing partner from, from, from Belgium, Roborana, and um, we, we offer services uh, around hyper automation. Um, we, we go really broad in the scope of automation. Uh, we like optimizing processes, redefining processes, and eventually really automating processes. So uh, thanks for the invitation, Nandan. Great to have you, Matthias. So uh, hyper automation. So what exactly does Roborana do now? And maybe you can start with a bit of history about Roborana, how it came about to be and what you do now. Yeah, actually, we started five years ago and we, we, we were basically doing pure old school RPA, um, robotics process automation. We were scraping uh, screens from, from, from one application towards another application. Uh, was working fine, uh, was quite booming business, really hype there. Uh, it, it's really task automation for me. I think uh, we, we've been doing great in, in that area, um, but we, we've been growing exponentially as well. So, so we've seen while we actually were doing these RPA projects, we were seeing that, it's, that the, the field of automation, the scope of automation is, is really getting broader and, and uh, needs to have more technologies, other technologies that can work together with RPA or really even uh, other platforms that you call the, the hyper automation platform. So um, we started with RPA and then we actually slowly grew into a more broader scope of automation. So how has that evolved? What has been your scope increase so far? And which areas do you find most promising among those? I think uh, the, the most important one, we, we started with more purely task automation. Uh, for me, the, the end goal should be always the end-to-end process automation. So, so the overall uh, process needs to be tackled. And uh, the overall process, the end-to-end process, should be become more efficient um, and then, then should become more lean. So, so how do you do that? It, it's, it's not just by automating one piece of the process. You need to look at the whole scope of the process. And, and sometimes you need different technology to, 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 to help you with that. And for me, that's, that's always, should always be the end goal. The, the, the solution should be the end-to-end process automation. So I like what you're saying, you know, we start with the business goal and look at what is the solution, right? Understand the problem and suggest the solution. Um, so which all industries do you, do you see automation being used to quite a lot? Well, most often we start in, in during the, the finance departments, uh, finance teams, and, and and because they have the quite standardized processes, uh, they they have their main ERP flows, and and they have their, all these these manual labor within these these these. These ERP flows and then sometimes these CRM flows as well, but we 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 were quite I, while we were doing that we we saw that actually yeah with the new technology coming up like like low code application development we saw that also these tools could help actually finance departments as well and and like like you could easily create a portal you could easily let's say create an uh, an, an application an app a mobile app that helped let's say really these, these finance people to to move quicker uh, and, and and to close their their month end closings or quarterly closings much faster than than before so so while we actually were helping them we saw that that the, the scope of automation could be become bigger because the technology Technology was quite evolving that fast, and then actually we saw okay, but besides finance processes, why don't we look at, at other industries, other uh, sectors, and and we, we looked at, at at HR processes as well because I, most of the time you see after finance you always target the, the HR uh, department. 
but we we weren't let's say that happy really to focus on one or, or two industries sectors because we we had the we had the technology we had the expertise to to tackle each and every uh, manual process uh, so so we we actually go bluntly to our customers and say to them okay do you have these kind of really repetitive manual processes uh, can we look at them can we analyze them can we propose a nice solution for them and, and, and try to, to make it more efficient. And then it doesn't matter actually whether you're in the utility sector or in the finance sector or insurance sector. It, I think every, let's say, modern uh, enterprise has, has, has an incredible need of digital transformation, digital evolution, like we call it. They need to start evolving towards a better digital uh, uh, future. And that's why they need to look at their processes, their legacy processes, but also building new processes adapted to the, the changing environments they are, they are uh, uh, let's say, uh, in, encountering. And so, so I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a challenging time for us. And so, so most of the time we start with a proof of concept or an MVP uh, in, the, in the finance department, but I, I, I think that's too limited for us. I, I think Oberana really wants to extend that scope and, and then go to, to broader uh, uh, sectors and, uh, and industry. Okay. Yeah, it uh, sounds like a typical journey, you know, finance, HR, then maybe procurement and, uh, you know, taking that lead. Uh, so having done uh, finance, probably for quite a few companies, you know, and you talked about digital evolution. So what are your thoughts on how the finance in you know, finance sector can digitally evolve? I often give some 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 kind of inspiration sessions uh, to 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 these uh, uh, CFOs uh, and, and and IT managers and finance managers and and what I what is really striking to me is that they 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 are really still quite old school in their thinking. Uh, okay, they understand they need to become more digital and they need to become more lean in their processes, but they always turn into their let's say ERP systems and and they always think. The ERP systems will solve them and, and, and will bring this this flexibility and the speed. And um, well, we we know all the, these these ERP systems, and and we also know that that yeah, it's it's not happening. It's it's they are not bringing the, the expected results that 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 the finance department and other managers should should have in in, in their department or their for their business unit. And so so what I like to inspire them is is, is really to 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 think not again more in, in these monoliths, uh, they need to, to extend their scope and they, they need to look at technology as an enabler for their ERP systems and CRM systems to really extend the scope of functionality. And, and it, it's really about functionalities. It's, it's not again uh, about the standard processes. Of course, we need these hardcore processes, ERP processes, and we need to have our master data in place and, and, and to be clean, but you have, tons of tons of processes reappearing or invented by business by because they are they have things changed they have these changed needs for their customers and for their employees and that's why they we need to rethink actually the 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 the, the place of, of a central erp system uh, together with, let's say, around all these different processes and technologies can work together and, and bring a better and, and much faster processes can really reduce these costs here. Yeah, and that's an interesting thought. Uh, having a monolithic ERP tries to take care of a lot of the functionality. And what happens is that kind of reduces the, you know, like you're saying, the functionality is because people have to do things outside the system, right, uh, to get their work done. And then a lot of finance is Excel. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Right, a lot of Excel, a lot of Excel is being used outside. And when I was uh, with, you know, when I'm with multiple clients, all these finance people talk about. In and then here is this Excel sheet. How do I take that data and automate the whole thing? Can you do that for me? Uh, so that thing that innovation or things happening outside that, you know, it's it's an interesting concept. You know, should we have an ERP monolithic ERP or should we have connected systems or how do you go about it so do you have any thoughts on that 
Well, for me, it's it's really important. It's 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 not you don't need an automation platform per se. You actually need an integrated platform. You Correct. need an integration platform, but that platform should be fully integrated in your application landscape. Um, so, for me, it's it you, you I, I I talk to customers and organizations who have sometimes thirteen different ERP systems. Um, so one, three ERP systems, different to manage, different to control. Um, it's really difficult for me, which is fine because they, they've done a lot of mergers and acquisitions. But the thing, it's really difficult because all these processes are flowing through these applications, through these ERP systems. And so what you actually need to really solve this, these, these processes is really to have an integrated platform, a platform with a lot of automation skills on top of that you can easily retrieve the data from the different systems, but you can also push them out to other systems and to really have these data insights on the way. And that's for me, the, the, the common goal. So for me, the central part of really automation and, and to improving your processes is to have an orchestrator. You have to have, an, let's say a platform that is able to, to connect with the different legacy and new applications, but also to, to move and transfer, let's say, the data from one system to another. So, so for me, that's, that's really a, a process orchestrator. And, and that's where the future uh, lies. So uh, it's, it's not an RPA. It's not a low-code application development. Yes, we all need these different technologies, but we need to bring that together in a platform thinking. And we need to change that mindset of, of modern enterprises that they, they need to start uh, evolving towards a really fully integrated office, and 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 that's where 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 I like to to inspire my 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 customers. Yeah, that that's actually that's what it is. You know, you hit the nail on the head. It's all digital is about bringing all this together in in sort of a one office kind of setup, right? Um, so uh, just taking that forward, you know, so there is that debate about which is that platform, right, which will bring it together. Um, so the RPA platforms like UiPath, you know, they want to be there as that platform and that's where they are evolving into a hyper automation platform. Uh, and then you have uh, the integration providers, like you said, you know, they are also uh, coming into the space and even the RPA providers are picking up the IPaaS providers. So everything mm -hmm. is coming together. Even the BPM providers uh, uh, have been picking up RPA and they're adding and then adding low code and things like that. So, you know, it's kind of a confused state out there. Uh, don't you think so? What, what, what do you think, you know, how would we evolve to, to have this platform that you're talking about? But I, I like to have this debate with, with, with the specific vendors you're mentioning. And, and um, what, what, what we have in our portfolio at Robana, we work with the, the, the top market leaders uh, in BPM, in RPA, in low code. Um, we, we, we all have them in our portfolio, so we all bring service to them. And I think it's uh, you have some big uh, differences between them, uh, which is true. But what they all want to do is one thing. They want to come, let's say, in the middle, let's say, in the space where it's end-to-end -end process automation. So they want to have the full scope of automation there. So not only task automation, they want to have, let's say, look at the process and then have all the right tools in their platform to tackle that process. And, and, and you need to have AI, you need to have, let's say, an integrational server, uh, you need to have RPA uh, um, uh, functionality. You also need some, some applica applications there. You need to have that data interacting with, with the users. So the users need to uh, able to be directly interacting with the process. So you need to have that low code application. But what is most important is that you have that end-to-end -to -end process scope but you need to have flexibility and you have to have, need to have speed because for me it's it used to be that you were automating um for for you automated in processes and then 10 years later i you said okay uh, the processes actually we don't, don't do the processes anymore so why should we actually automate for 10 years no you should automate for two years maybe and you need to be quick because the, the 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 market and and the customers are are moving so you need to have a platform which all the different tools are let's say inside the platform but which is quick to implement which is scalable let's say you have a good basic foundation of this 
orchestration tools. And then you, you also need to have, let's say, a little, little bit price, price uh, let's say, uh, feasible, let's say, because it should be, if, if you only tackle these processes for, for two years, you, you should have an ROI within the six months. So it should make common sense that you, you use a platform for different use cases. The end goal should be end-to-end uh, -end process automation. And um, you should be able to use easily the different skills of automation, like I call them, really in one platform. And, and you do have these platforms, and, and they're all moving to the same, in the same direction. And some are coming from the RPA side, some are coming from the BPM side, uh, other are coming from more from an AI product uh, side, uh, which is fine, all fine for me. But um, it's for us as, as an implementator, as, 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 an, as a service provider, as Oberana, really to, to uh, bring that expertise, bring that knowledge to our customers and, and tell them from how you can use these different technologies together and, and think as a platform and think and change that mindset. So I think that's, that's our main goal and main task for us. Uh, yeah, and very well said. I think you said many things there. You know, a platform that is dynamic, quick, easy to use, great pricing uh, or great value for people to use, right? Uh, and so I don't know, uh, from your perspective, from a Roborana perspective, what do you think? Is there a platform like that right now? Or do you suggest bringing in together different platforms or technologies to stitch together to make that or well, what do you suggest usually well, most of the time it's the ideal world would be that you always have a green field at your customers uh, you 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 have like they don't have any of the technology yet and you say <laughs> guys go go for that platform and you will have it all um uh, unfortunately that doesn't exist so so what I think is you always have to use the best of the breed and, and you can you can try to, to bring uh, technology which is already at present within the, 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 the organization, within the company. You can already look at them um, and try to, let's say, mimic or let's say, uh, use a technology that is complementary to all the tools they already have. What I often see, and, and that's that's my main, well, it, it hurts my eyes, I have to say. So, so they are really business, and sometimes business is not really well informed. Uh, they want to get get things moving, they want to go fast, which is fine, but they, they, they start with one technology and it's actually on a platform. Um, and, and, and then they don't know, actually they use 10%, 15% of the functionality of that platform. And then for another use case, yeah, they, they think they need another platform or technology and then okay they buy and they start again with that platform and then at the end they are complaining for yeah, we, we cannot have scale with these platforms uh, but then I'm saying well, guys you, you have already five let's say exact identical tools and platforms in-house but you use the, the 10 to 20 percent of, of, of the platform and you don't talk to each other let's say you don't share these 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 functionality and you don't uh, share this expertise you have uh, and then what, what I often see is is for example if you look at the end-to-end -end process it starts in one business unit it goes to another business unit and sometimes it ends in an even another business unit so if you just look yeah within within that one business unit you know, it, sometimes it makes sense to use that technology but if you look at the overall process you need to combine sometimes the different technologies and for me that's the difficult part to to to, to for my job of actually to to really try to inspire them for how it could be um, and then move towards that. And, and sometimes, yeah, I have to work with different technologies they already in, in, have in-house, but we try to come up with a, with a good solution, which is sustainable and, and future-proof. And um, so is there already a, a platform that exists that offers all these skills? I think there are many platforms that already exist that, that offer these skills. Um, I think you have to be a little bit challenging for yourself and look at what are you having already in the organizations, try to maximize the value of that technology and try to bring it together, uh, bring it together with other technologies and then you will see you will get even more value from these technologies. So that will be my advice, let's say, don't look at the holy grail, one platform do, does it all. I think 
they exist, but it's really difficult really to start and throw off, out all the other technologies. So look at what you have already in organization, talk to each other, share expertise and bring these technologies together. And that's, that's really for me, the definition of hyper automation. For me, that's, that's really the end goal. It's not which technology you use, it's actually, for me, it's actually a framework. It's not which technology you use, it's actually how you use the technologies together and, and try to, to have a clear vision and clear strategy of moving forward. And, and the technology is there. I think the technology has been booming the last two, three years, it was, was incredible how fast new functionality were, that was, was coming in these new platforms. But yeah, business is not following anymore with that new technology. So we don't, I, I'm, I'm very confident that the current uh, technology vendors are, are there and they have figured it out. But now it's time to really organize yourself as an organization and really use the best of the technology uh, at the right time with the right use case and, and share these expertise within the organization and, and then you will scale. Okay, yeah, and I totally agree, you know, it's, uh, and technology is not the key part, right? And uh, unfortunately, many people select the technology. And it, uh, like you said, different groups have different technologies. And I've seen this in multiple places across my career. I mean, like, you know, when I've, I've done enterprise application integration, I used to go to customers, and they used to have like you know five six integration technologies they used to have yeah. different bpm technologies now they have different rpa technologies and it uh, all seems to be you know tool led and then each of them picks one tool and then tries to do a part of it uh, and then there is no common thing i don't know if there's a solution to it uh, i don't know if the new SaaS era will bring in some solution what do you think well, I think it's, it, it, there, there will always be new tools and, and, and that's good, that, that, that drives that evolution, and, and which is good. Um, but what we really have to try is, is to, to help organizations to, to, to cope with these new functionalities, new technologies. We need to help them how they actually bring in, how they can actually bring in these innovative technologies so but they need to have like a, a, a good foundation they need to have their governance let's say plan ready uh, and then it doesn't matter if you just add one or two or three other tools uh, it should be all the same because the end goal is is making a process more efficient and and um what I often see it is more like an uh, organizational problem, uh, like uh, you, you have different center of excellence teams within the, the, the organization organized by tool, but these are not talking to each other. And, and, and so they should be, let's say, governed by, by, by a global uh, or by, by an, an over uh, archering, let's say, center, center of excellence, which, is, which knows perfectly the, 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 the pros and the cons from the different Different tools, and you need to be. You need to have like a like a uh, demand management uh, approach that you really know. For, okay, this use case, we use this technology. For that use case, we probably should use that technology. And so, so for me, it's it's more like guiding our uh, our customers and guiding these organizations into a more mindset and changing their mindsets, let's say, uh, how they should, let's say, work with these new technologies. And um, what we like to do is, is let's say, we, 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 we work with automation coaches and, and like a coach should do, we should guide these, these, these teams and, and, and to, to challenge them from, look, did you already think about this? And did you already think about that? And that's for me, the most important difference than, than five years ago, for example, then we just been asked for guys, just implement this, this tool and, and, and here you have to, some use cases and then uh, automate them. But now are we are more evolving towards like, uh, okay, we can implement them. Uh, we can deliver these, these automations, but okay, we can also help you, let's say, drive these, these changes within the organization and to scale these, these, these technologies within the organization. So for me, that's a big shift, uh, how we are now actually moving on the market. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense, right? Because earlier it was, uh, uh, there's a shiny tool and let's go explore it. Uh, and when I started, you know, we used to go and evangelize uh, RPA. 
uh, and now people know all about it it's more about how you do it right and 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 and, and do it uh, based on you know what are people a lot of people have done this before now you don't need to reinvent the wheel how do you do it well right and also i think people stepping back and then thinking about the whole digital evolution that you were talking about uh, and you know probably having a centralized coe or something where the business uh, you know that whole business objectives is considered right yeah so i think it's, it's to add to that it's it's really sometimes they ask me can you do a workshop where we um, go over the, the 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 all the benefits or all the pros and the cons from from a technology signal and compare that with other technologies uh, so and then they already have a list yeah five technologies and might just tell me which one should I use and uh, which one is the best for us and almost all the times I always say fun guys we, we need to have more information we need to have we need to what is the strategy behind this? What, what do you already have in the organization? Which kind of teams do you have? Which do you want to have citizen development there? Do you want to, you want to, let's say, do this, this IT? Is this, they, are they on board or is this only a business uh, sponsor there? So, so we need to, to, to have more discussions about that than just selecting the right tool. Because in my opinion, there's no right tool. You have a right use case and you have a right solution. But it, it, it's sometimes really difficult for me because they know, of course, Roborana as, as a technology company. And, and um, so, so it would be very, very easy for me for, look, this is the right tool. You can start with it. And then we start with it. And after two or three months, you say, okay, ah, shit, this is not the right tool anymore. And, and you, we have to change direction. And then, then I, I make a fool of myself. So, so I rather have the, the, the really common sense there and, and really have that mindset ready. And then, then, and then we can start the journey. And, and for me, that's the right approach. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, there is this question that always comes to me is what's the right tool? What's the best RPA tool? What's the best BPM tool? What's the best uh, NLP tool and thing, and chatbot yeah. tool and things like that, right? Uh, uh, but uh, the, the the problem with that approach uh, is that, like you said, you know, not all tools work same for everyone. You know, what works for somebody may not work for someone. And this whole analyst approach of having quadrants and saying that here you have UI path is the best and automation anywhere is the second best. The problem with that is that even today, you know, because of this information, uh, there's a lot of information available out there. CEOs, CEOs of companies approaching me, they are like, oh, I already decided a tool. I just need you to come and, yeah. you know, set up this, uh, you know, uh, structure or uh, help me understand the process. I already said the tool. And I'm like, where did you understand that? It's just that, you know, yeah, they are in the quadrant. So I either do UI path or automation anywhere or maybe Microsoft. I don't want to do anything else. And I'm like, uh, you know, how do you know that without even knowing what what's your potential within your company and what you're going to do? So I think, you know, that, it's actually a bit of a reverse process. You know, people select tools first uh, because of this, uh, I think that hype in the market, right? What do you think? I think uh, there, there, there are several hypes in the market. And uh, I think uh, um, we see it often with, with, with AI. Uh, a lot of, of, of companies, they, they just need to start with AI. Uh, and I'm always asked, for, okay, what, what, what does AI mean for you? And, and, and yeah, we need to do something with AI because it's cool and, and, and it's, it's new <laughs> and it's innovative. And, and I'm saying, okay, fine. But again, what do you want to do? And, and exactly. so, so we, we have these different hives, which, is, which, which also helps us, of course. Eh? We, we are yeah. quite relevant, be, uh, relevant because of these hives. And, and you have all these, these analyst reports uh, showing the best tools uh, for them. But for, like it's you said, for them. It, 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 not for them it's just a generic quadrant out there this is the best tool <laughs> again can. it's not fitted on the organization it's yeah. not fitted on the on the question of, of the customer and and um so 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 for me hype hype is good uh, i like hypes uh, i like surfing on these hypes uh, but hype cannot be we should never over promise um i think we should always be realistic by, by saying for guys this, this this is cool technology ai is is something that is really helpful for your processes but 
why don't we think first a strategy and why don't we think first of all an overall strategy how are we making let's say uh, what is the end goal of, of, of our, our company or what, what do you want to do with these processes and then we match the right uh, technology to the right use case and once we have that in place we are able to really experiment to to innovate with these technologies and to extend let's say or, or expand the functionalities we are actually using in these technologies so for me i i like hives uh, again uh, but uh, we should be careful that we the hives are not really over promising uh, the the results and, and and then it's really difficult uh, if you have to it, it's like a it's like uh, you 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 have you are a small child and you you let's say you you, you see something that you really want uh, and and I think it, it's really fun to have it and then and then once you have it and 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 then the products or the toys is is not delivering what you expected and it's really difficult in the journey to, to start with and then yeah you, you yeah you bought uh, you know, did a big big investment let's say in the technology and then you were thinking God, this is this this is gonna change everything. Thing. But at the end, it, it didn't change everything. It, it, it was a realistic tool and, and it is there. And now you have to organize yourself to work with that toy or that new tool. And, and so for me, it's, it's I, I, again, it's, it's, it should be realistic and we should always be having that debate for, okay, uh, hype is good to, make, to have market presence and to have market awareness. Uh, but we, as experts, should be there to really to help them, um, uh, yeah, to use it to guide them uh, these these technologies. Yeah, and uh, totally agree. We do need hype, and hype takes things forward, right? And because it creates that excitement, uh, but also we need to tone it down and bring it down to what is actually useful for you, for us as a customer, right? Uh, and that's the whole idea of uh, Bot Nirvana Club. So what we are what we are doing is actually we discuss this in the club that it's more about unlearning because there's a lot of hype out there when you if you're within the social media there's a lot of hype you're listening to various mm -hmm. things various shiny things like you said a child you're attracted to it and then I've heard stories about like people who went down that path for four years five years and then they found that that tool doesn't work for them so every mm -hmm. tool doesn't work for everyone so you know the idea is it's not just the tool it's a complete uh, package right and uh, you need to understand your business objective and go from there in terms of what's the solution uh, so that that's that's our whole idea and we've been discussing about it and you know how we unlearn this whole thing and take a step back and 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 understand and this whole uh, environment or this whole ecosystem that's evolving and uh, and apply what's best for each of our uh, interests wow we, we like the saying it's we, we we want to talk about the holy trinity the holy trinity is for me the strategy and then combined with the people and combined with the technology and you have to come up with some something that works for, for all three pillars and and so so for me that 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 holy trinity should be always in the mind from all the people and and uh, okay you choose the right technology okay but which people we want to use and how does it fit in the overall strategy and so so we always have to keep that in mind and 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 then it might work and then you actually are able to scale um, and, and for me, that that's 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 really simple but ba basic lesson that that I always give. And, and and think about three things: strategy, people, and 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 your technology. And then when you have that in balance, you have your let's say process in balance as well. So yeah, strategy, people, and technology, right? And, and that's I think that's a great note to end this on. So uh, Matthias, great talking to you today. So if people want to connect with you and Roborona, how how can they do that? So Oana is based in, in Belgium uh, and the Netherlands. So um, if you're from these countries, of course, you can easily find us, but uh, just uh, go to our website, uh, roberana.be or roberana.nl, um, or you can find us on, on the LinkedIn and, uh, and then even the socials, uh, Facebook and, and Instagram. So uh, please follow me as well uh, on LinkedIn and, uh, and I hope to, to hear, hear about you. Thank you for joining the Bot Nirvana podcast. Appreciate if you can leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Catch the show notes on botnirvana.org. While you're there, feel free to explore more automation ideas, tutorials, tools, and more. See you next time.